uh, and give it up for the, for the foodies. <laughs> all right. Hello. Look at you guys. Hey, can you all right. hear me? All yeah, right. right up here. First of all, thank you for staying until the end of the day. If you want to get up, stretch, move around. No? You guys awake out there? <laughs> we, uh, since we were last, thanks, Jeff, um, we decided what better to do than drink while we're up here. So we've got Cheers. some bourbon. Uh, we're going to have a good time. Cheers. So I hope that you guys have a good time with us. I have my water because I turn red. <laughs> like they're going to be sleeping, they're going to be yawning. Right. This so, is definitely a good idea. Yeah, so we're yeah. going to have some drinks. I hope that you guys enjoy our little chat here. Um, our panel was supposed to be about building niche food communities, um, building up a community one person at a time who are passionate about the same things that we are when it comes to food. But when we found out that we got moved to the very end of the day, we said, let's not talk about anything serious. Let's just talk about life, take some questions from the audience. So I'm really hoping that this pays off and that at least one of you or two of you are listening to us. I know that those two guys right there are listening to us. So, um, so I'll introduce myself quickly and then I'll uh, let my panelists introduce themselves. I'm Emily Cavalier. On Twitter I am eCava, E-C-A-V-A. -A. Um, I would love it if you'd follow me so I can keep up with you guys and meet you either online or offline. My food website is mouthoftheborder.com. Uh, my supper club is midnightbrunch.com. And I uh, just quit my job yesterday to uh, start my Ooh, life full cheers. time in food and beverage. Ooh. It's also yeah. it's why we're drinking. So I'll hand things off to Eric to introduce himself. Cheers to that. Thank you. I'm Eric Trinidad. I run Fancy Fast Food uh, at Fancy Fast Food. Um, I bas if you don't know about it, I basically make uh, gourmet food porn out of uh, chain fast food without adding any extra ingredients except for a garnish because Fancy food looks good with garnish, and they don't really have garnishes. You think he's dogs. kidding, but he made pasta puttanesca out of a Papa John's pizza a couple yeah, of days ago. That was, I literally did that two days ago, and it went online yesterday, and it's on Fancy Fast Food. Um, follow me at Fancy Fast Food. I'm Leah. I'm a community manager at Busy, which is an app that makes it super simple to share your experiences, especially out and about at local restaurants. Um, but I'm really here as Mac Cheesy. Uh, two years ago in 2009, I started tweeting about my passions in mac and cheese and have been connecting with people in New York and all throughout the country about the best places and the coolest mac and cheese dishes uh, that's out there. So, at Mac Cheesy. And there's a lot of good mac and cheese in New York. Great, and I've been food spotting them. Excellent. Uh -huh. Well, that leads to where, where I work. Um, I am Amy Chow. I am the head of community at foodspotting.com. Yay! <laughs> um, She's really wise. We you guys are a are website and a, a mobile app that's free on your iPhone and your Android and soon to your Blackberry. And also, before I joined Food Spotting, I, I started my own food blog called Amy Blogs Chow. And I started making stupidly simple snack videos, which is why Emily invited me, because it's a quite uh, specific thing that I, was, that I am doing, these snack videos, because I, I'm so entrenched in the food field that it was just funny that I can't cook for my life. So I would go make microwavable potatoes and um, a lot of things in my microwave and film it. And it, the, it, the response has been pretty good so far. So. Yeah. Excited about that. Cool. Thanks, guys. Um, so we're just going to talk a little bit informally, maybe about food, maybe not, maybe about life instead. Um, as, we're, as we're talking, we'd love to take a few questions from the audience. You'll just have to speak up or come up here so I can repeat your question for you. Um, they should come up, I think. I think that the first person actually comes up with a question, I'll give them some bourbon. But let's, let's, get yes. in, let's, let's get into it first. Let's get into it. This is Hudson Baby Bourbon. They're it's one good. of my sponsors it's, it's for my bourbon. summer club. It's, yeah. it's a New York bourbon. We don't skip at this conference. Um, so I just wanted to start off. Um, obviously, leaving my job yesterday after four and a half years was a huge decision. Um, 140 Comp is in part to thank for that. A couple of years ago, at the very first one, um, I decided to start my site. And I started at the end of June in 2009. And then at the LA conference that year, I was having dinner with my good friends CC Chapman and Sarah Prevett, and I was talking about food, and CC's like, I don't have any idea why you're not doing that full time. And the next month, I gave my notice, um, obviously a very long notice, but here I am, first day of freedom. Um, so I guess you get that question a lot. Like, so many people I meet say, how are you sustaining your food blog full time? How are yeah. you pursuing your food passion? So, I mean, personally, that for me, it's been a roller coaster where I was 
freelancing and writing for different publications, and now I'm full-time at, at Food Spotting. So, so for you, you have your supper club, and you have your, your food blog, and your pursuits. So I guess what I, I guess my question <laughs> is, how are you doing it? How, how am I, doing? that is a great question. Um, I think, and I just had a conversation with somebody uh, about an hour ago, ran into each other on the street, he'd been trying to meet me for a while, and he was talking about, oh, I wish I could quit my job and do the same thing, but just for myself, and I worked in a very corporate industry, and uh, luckily that experience is very valuable. I work in the event and conference industry, and a lot of food and beverage brands want to produce their own events to meet people live, face to face, and they should be doing that, because food and beverage is a very intimate, sensual experience, and it should be experienced live. Um, so I'm using that, that experience to help food and beverage brands, and if I get to wake up and think about food and talk about food all day, then I'm happy. So that's what's bringing in revenue, but also Mouth of the Border is about New York City's ethnic neighborhoods, and I'll never run out of things to talk about, um, and luckily there's tons of interest in that. So um, writing about ethnic food has led to being viewed as sort of an expert on it, I guess. So people want to take that experience, and I think in the same experience that you had with your past food experience and food writing, and then the community that you built around your website, another company noticed that, or you noticed that company and said, I think that there's a good fit for me over there. Um, I think that when you make room for opportunities in your life, the right things tend to find you. And if you're on Twitter, it helps a lot too. Yeah, yeah, Twitter has not been a bad thing for meeting a ton of good people. So obviously I think everybody in this room gets it though, yeah. so we don't have to talk too much about Twitter, but. Um, what I, well, just to jump in, I think what makes I think food especially interesting is that convergence of online and offline, and um, you know, food spotting and busy. You know, we do meetups uh, monthly or near monthly, um, and the opportunity that's created in not only you know doing maybe niche passions and talking about those online and connecting online, but really the opportunities to bring it offline because it's those yeah. offline interactions that really de deepen in a connection and a community. So for whatever your passions are, you know, find the ways, I, I would say, to bring it offline um, to get to know the people that you're tweeting with and, and strengthen that community around you. And there's so many yeah. different food passions. Like, yes. you're making fancy food. The, the thing about fancy food food it was, it, I don't really consider it a passion. It's just sort of this thing that I did when I was <laughs> bored. And was like, everyone was like, oh my god, were you high when you did that? And I'm like, no, it was just like, I was supposed to go to the gym, I was like, it was raining, I didn't feel like going out, and I always had this idea in my head, like, oh, one day when I have nothing to do, I'll turn a Big Mac into a steak. That's so funny. <laughs> That's awesome. And then uh, I had this one day where it's like, oh, there, I have time on my hands, because I never have time on my hands. Um, and then I put it online. I was amazed that FancyFastFood.com had not been taken yet, because it seemed to be. Do you have a book deal that's yet? that's so common, right? Has anyone approached um, you for a book I have deal? a book deal now. It's... And you got a book deal from yeah. it. I mean, that's just amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird, because like, all this happened because... Um, all this happened because I was sort of bored. I'm, I'm in the food community. It's like fast food. Um, I sort of did it as a goof on gourmets and fast foodies, and just like... It's putting funny. the two together and it's yeah. like my whole philosophy is like people like villainize fast food but I believe that like it's not like you know going to Momofuku and getting the pork bun isn't as bad right. uh, so it's like there are all these things that are bad for you and I've realized that you know the food police are like oh uh, Splenda's bad for you you're but then, promoting obesity yeah 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 <laughs> but um, but Splenda is bad for you, and then the New York Times says, "Oh, but real sugar is bad for you." So like, I've come to the conclusion that like, everything's bad for you. You shouldn't eat anything, oh. or you should just eat everything. In moderation. Yeah, in moderation. Yeah, moderation. Or, or just play with it, like you do, and photograph it and put it yeah. on the internet. <laughs> or or don't actually eat it and just like make it look pretty and take That's, pictures of it, and it's and, a really and great then site. start a website. Pictures of food. It's a great site. <laughs> I'm excited for your book. Okay. Ooh, we have some questions. I gave, I gave kind of a bullshit answer, though, as far as making money from your blog. Obviously, I have sponsors, sponsors of Midnight Brunch. A big sponsor might be happening soon. Watch my Foursquare check-ins if you follow me on Foursquare tomorrow. Um, so obviously, companies are interested in what I'm doing and want to get to my community, which is the power of building a community in the first place. If you build a passionate following, companies want to pay to get in front of that. Yep. Um, let's see. We have three questions wow. here. So we'll go in order, starting with the back. In the white sweater, it looks I th like. I think Would you she like wants some bourbon? bourbon. Would you like some bourbon? <laughs> Come on up. Okay. I'll drink for you. Thank you. 
young chefs or kids, I don't know, all kinds of uh, user-generated activities that are actually going to try the, the flavors. I think when you build a buzz on Twitter or Facebook, um, you, like, people come to you because you're already putting it out there and you become visible. Um, and then, I mean, I really didn't intend the site to go, to, to go as big as it did. And it was just because it was on Twitter, it was on Facebook. Um, it just sort of went viral from there. And like, everyone asked me, oh, do you have, do you have an agent or something? And I'm like, no, people, I'm just getting cold calls from television shows and stuff. Um, <laughs> But yeah, there are more opportunities to partner, or, or if you have really good cooking skills, there's plenty of food events um, that you can partner up with. And a lot of um, these bloggers, especially in New York, they participate in, or, or they'll do supper clubs, like yeah. Emily. Like I decided to start a supper club to bring people together offline, and it's been amazing. And you can, you can profit from that, uh, maybe not in the beginning, but there are different opportunities. Or just go wild. If Kraft is listening, I always thought I would love to do a... Uh, mac and cheese eating contest. Like so, today. fun things yeah. like that too. We had so many together. more questions. Well, mm -hmm. since our time is up, just find us afterwards. We're happy to talk to everybody and we're happy to close things out here. I hope that you guys have had a great experience. I have a little bit of bourbon left, so just find us afterwards yeah. in the lounge. <laughs> and cheers <laughs> to 140 Cheers. Yeah. Thank you.